Woohoo! We are going to do ink blending today, and I cannot wait. This is going to be so much fun. Maybe a little messy, but that's part of crafting, right? <laughs> This is going to be ink blending 101. I am going to pretty. I'm going to exclusively use distress oxide inks. This is my preferred ink for this technique. You can definitely do this with dyes and pigments and hybrids of inks too. Um, but I think that the distress oxide is the easiest one to do. It is a hybrid between a dye ink and a pigment ink, um, and so it stays wet a little bit longer on your paper and makes it for easier blending. So uh, whether you're a beginner, a novice, or just kind of wondering if you want to get into this. Um, this is what I would definitely recommend is Distress Oxide, plus there's so many colors, 60 something plus colors to choose from. Um, and plus you can stamp with them and you can do so many other techniques. If you want to learn more about ink pads or the different kinds of inks, I did an Ink Pads 101 last Wednesday, so you can go back and look at that video after we're done with this one. Welcome everybody, thanks for joining me. My name is Janine, I am the Paper Crafts Buyer for Craft Warehouse. And I've been doing a 101 series this month, and this is the last one for the month. This one is all about ink blending. So we're basically going to focus on the different kinds of tools that you can use to blend inks, inks being the inks from an ink pad onto paper, and some different techniques and how to do that. Some sort of do's and don'ts, if you will. Hello, Jen from Idaho. Welcome. You know what? I'm originally from Idaho. So, you know, fellow spud here. <laughs> okay. So a couple of things that you'll need. Obviously you're gonna need ink. I have already, as I already mentioned, I prefer distress oxide, but you can do this with regular dye inks or pigment inks. Um, I like the oxide because it's a fusion of the two, a hybrid, if you will, partially pigment, partially dye. And so uh, I love that because it stays wet long enough for you to be able to blend it and get really nice seamless blends. Um, and then we need different tools. We'll go over those different tools. I suggest that you hit work on some kind of a mat. I like my glass mat. So that's how this black grid you see in the background. This is a glass mat by Tim Holtz. I really prefer using it because it's, it's very easy to move my tool from paper to mat and back. Um, some people don't like that. So uh, you might want to at least use a paper, a scrap piece of paper. Okay. Or um, if you have like a silicone mat, like this one that would work too okay don't fold those roll them up don't 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 do like me <laughs> okay welcome everybody louise from south dakota all right and sandy from michigan wow this is awesome i hope you guys have been checking out our new website we have lots of great things there including our brand new exclusive glitter from glitter guy it's a pretty pacific it's pretty awesome i, I kind of dig it <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to just dive in using the foam pods. So these are sold as a two pack of, you get two rounds like this, and they have a little bit of Velcro on them. And you can choose to either get the flat discs like this, that come totally clean, white, or the um, domed little foam discs like this. These ones have been around for many, many years, and I've used them, and they work great. Hello from Texas and Norway. <gasps> wow, I think you might win the prize, Randy, for being from Norway. My goodness. Okay, and this one is a foam dome <laughs> dauber. So you can see that one's quite flat and one is more domed. Uh, this one is, is a much more recent... Um, item and this real if you are a beginner or you're intimidated or you haven't liked your outcome when you try to blend blend inks the dome is your friend it's much more affordable than other tools or sets and it just helps avoid the sharp edges or or indications you can get with a flat okay and I think the best way to start if you're just beginning is to do it with a stencil because a stencil will hide a lot of your uh, any mistakes, you know, it's, it, it's a little easier to work with. So I have here a really fun stencil. Oh, rip the, rip the package. This one is from photo play. It's a three piece set. So you get your diagonal, your horizontal and your vertical stripes. You can use these in combination to make a plaid if you want to, which is really fun, but I think we'll use a diagonal. It's just kind of fun. And let's clear some space and we'll get started. Okay. Get these guys off to the side. We'll go, I'm going to go over the brushes and these little dome guys too. We will definitely play with everything. It's also important to have good paper. Um, I'm going to use, let's see, 
I'll do sort of these colors right here, I think, for my stencil. Um, I'm going to use a very smooth paper. I like to use 100 pound Cardmaker's Choice heavyweight paper. Um, you can use other brands and other weights. You just need it to be really, really smooth for a seamless blend. Okay, so let's get our... I've just taken one of those pieces of paper and trimmed it down a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to add a stencil. This stencil is narrower than my paper, so I'm going to actually go this way. And then I can just trim it. Okay, and if you have a matte... A, a, a mat for ink blending, that would work too. I'm just gonna put a little washi tape down on this guy to hold it in place. I also did a stenciling 101 this month, so you could go back and look at that video as well. What else did I do? I, we did the stenciling, the inks, the ink blending. Oh, and we did 3D embossing folders. Ooh, that was a fun one. All right. I am considered, I have in the past done 101 adhesives and maybe that doesn't sound very much fun or very sexy, but I tell you what, it is jam packed full of information and there's been a lot of new adhesives lately. So I'm kind of thinking about um, doing that one again. I don't know if it's necessary, but I, I am kind of picky about my glue. <laughs> okay. So with, I don't, I don't think I'm going to use all these colors because I have a very small square here, but I think I will blend a couple of colors together. So let's try the blue, purple, pink combo here. Should we do the primaries? I think this is better because these are a little bit more user friendly for a beginner just because you want to pick colors. If you're just starting out, choose colors that are close to each other on the color wheel. If you don't have a color wheel, just think about the rainbow. So try to choose colors that are close to each other, okay? And then start with your lightest color. I'm gonna use a combination of flat and dome so you can maybe appreciate the difference. And I'm going to, if, you, if you're starting with a brand new, like this is totally white, you're really gonna to wanna to saturate it, like really push it in there. You really want this completely coated with ink. If you're starting with a brand new one and just kind of do this kind of a thing, you're not going to get, nothing's going to happen and you're just going to get these really weird round circles. So really saturate. You want this to be nice and wet. And then either on a piece of paper or on your mat, you just kind of pounce it off a little bit. You can, it helps you to appreciate how much ink you have on your, on your foam dauber and also to how to control it. You know, you don't want it so wet that it's like paint, but you don't want it so dry that nothing's happening. Now I'm going to be cutting off the top and the bottom, so I'm not worried about going over the edge. So I'm going to go in a circular motion and just bring it, I'm starting on the mat and I'm going to bring it up and over the stencil. And I have three colors, so I'm going to go about a third of the way. I'm starting with my lightest color because I can always go back and add more later. If I need to. Okay, I think I'm gonna go that far. See this particular stripe, I did not completely saturate. I'm gonna try to zoom in just a little for you. There we go. So I'm hoping to maybe blend the purple into there. Now my next two colors are very dark, so um, I'm gonna have to really do some blending, <laughs> which is the point, right? So this one is wilted violet. Oh, this is a pretty color. I'm gonna start over here. Pounce it off so I can see how much I have. Okay. And I'm not going to start right up there. I'm going to, I'm going to come down a little bit. Let me focus kind of in this middle section, starting on the mat and working my way up through the stencil. Always daubing off before I commit. Okay. And now I'm going to start working towards the um, pink. Now I just keep these to the color family. So I will use this one for different shades of purple, but you certainly could um, have one for each individual color. And what some people like to do for storage. So these are attached with a piece of Velcro to the wood. So you could put another piece of Velcro on the back side of each of your ink pads and then just store it like that so that they are always available with the, with the 
color that you want to use it for. That's just a little tip if you want, if you like to be very, very organized, <laughs> you could do that. Okay, now where purple and pink meet, I'm gonna kind of start to blend those two together. Just going into the pink a little bit. And then a light hand on this last one for my purple so I can blend the blue color into that one. I'm gonna go back to my pink and go over where those two colors meet. Okay, now go to the blue. So I'm gonna remove that one and stick this one onto the tool. Get it nice and saturated, and then I'm gonna pounce off over here. This one was really juicy. It's a brand new color for me, a new ink pad for me, so I don't need to press too hard. And I'm gonna start farthest away. So I'm gonna start over here and just start working my way towards the purple. So I have very deeply saturated here, very light here, and there's my light purple. So now I'm gonna use a light hand and I'm just going to blend those two colors together. Okay, and then I need to go back to the purple. I'll pick up color from my mat over here and just go right between those two. So I laid down color and then went back, laid down color and then went back, back and forth. Okay, time to reveal. <laughs> this will be fun. It is handy to have some paper towels. Okay. It's time to reveal our work, right? Now remember the two ends I cut are a little, my paper is longer than I want my finished project to be. So I will be um, trimming off the top and the bottom of this piece. Just carefully pick that up. Oh wow, isn't that pretty? Look at that. What did we ever do without washi tape? I do not know. Okay, cleanup is gonna be really easy. We just need water. Water on my mat. And then your stencils, you definitely wanna clean your stencils right away too. If you're just using a water-based ink like this, it's easy to clean with water. If you're using something stickier or more permanent, Go ahead and throw it in a little little tub of like warm soapy water. You can get back to as long as it's soaking, you can get back to it and clean it later. But it is important to clean up your space. Look at how pretty my trash is gonna be today. Look at that. <laughs> Wednesday's trash day for me, so my so they've already picked up my trash, but next week they'll have a surprise. <laughs> they'll have a colorful pickup. Okay, and then you just wanna make sure that your stencil is dry and doesn't have any color so you don't get color transfer for the next time. Okay, and let's look at our, let me bring that back in so we can look at it and appreciate how those colors blended together. If you're asking questions in the comments and I'm not answering you, it's only, I'm only me. I, I can't look at both things at once, but I'll go back and read your comments later and answer anything that I might may have missed. But I do appreciate your comments, keep them coming. And if you need tips you have or any um, experiences you have with ink blending, go ahead and put those in the comments too. Hopefully I'll address them, but if I don't, I will later too, okay? So this would be really fun. Cut that, put a little sentiment on top of that one. Let's see, do I happen to have, I think maybe something probably a little bit more bold. Um, I have this die cut from Hero. It says hello there, that would be cute, like in a dark color. And maybe, yeah, hello there, and then I, then the gorgeous, or I miss you, or something. Those would be very cute on there. Okay, so let's get into. So that's with the stencil, and the stencil really, like I say, really does help help you with your beginning um, stages of learning how to ink blend because it does. You don't have to use as much ink. Um, it definitely teaches you about uh, blending colors together, and it kind of hides some flaws. <laughs> okay, so let's do an actual full panel now, and let's also try. 
this kind of blending tool. I'm going to back up just a little, hopefully. Let's see if I can remember how to do that. There we go. Okay. So these, this is a really fun little set. They come to you completely um, clean, like this one. And you get the mix of circles and triangles. There's 40, I believe, in here. 45, maybe. <laughs> anyway, uh, so these are great. I just keep one to each color family, essentially. You can use them like little stampers. So I can make little triangles, like make a little banner. But the triangles are specifically designed for doing edges of things. Um, but you can do, and in the circles, you can do polka dots or whatever. But um, they are just mini versions of something like this. So they have a whole cute little holder here that you can hang on to. And then they have the raised foam dome, foam dome <laughs> for the circles, which is nice. And I just, if you love organization, I just love, they come in this case. It's, you can, you close it shut. You can keep them all organized. They don't fall out of their place. Everybody has a home. That's just, I love that. <laughs> so let's do some blending with these little guys. Normally, I don't really use these for large spaces. I use this for typically use this for really small spaces or if I want lots of stripes of a lot of different kinds of colors. So let's actually try to do that. Let's just start with this red and just like before I'm going to really saturate this and I'm going to practice with it on my um, glass mat or scrap piece of paper and I'm going to circular motion work my way on and come off. I like these foam daubers because they really lay down a lot of ink. So very, very saturated in color, which is, which is awesome. Okay. I did not grab an orange color. Let me see. Aha. Spiced marmalade. I'm going to go just under the red, sort of make a stripe, and then work in a circular motion and work my way up into the red. And working into the red, I can blend those two together. And then I'm just going to daub this off till this goes back to the normal orange color. Let's try mustard seed. I'm going to grab a piece of scrap paper. I know I have some here. Ah, here it is. This is handy to have for a couple of reasons. I'll just fold it in half. This is just some printer paper. But if you have extra, you know, cardstock or something, inexpensive cardstock, you could do that too. I'm going to use this to hold it down so I don't get fingerprints in here. See, I have blue ink on my fingers. I don't want to accidentally get blue where I, you know, where I don't want it. So I'm going to use this to help me hold the paper. And also, I'm going to use it to test my ink or whatever color's on my pad to make sure it's the color that I want. Okay, so now I'm going to do a stripe of yellow. So I'm going to come down just below the orange. Okay, and then a circular motion. Make that all nice and yellow before I come up to, and then fill in the gap, working into the orange ahead of it. And I'm using what I would call a medium heavy pressure. I think for these little guys they um th this is for when you want a real saturated look is to use the foam particularly the smaller i find the smaller the foam the more intense the more payoff you get so that is something to consider if you're wanting a lighter color or a really soft application i think a brush will be better and we'll, we'll look at brushes here in a minute okay then we want a fun green color let's try twisted citron And I'm going to go just below the yellow and then circular motion, fill it in and then into the yellow, blend, blend, blend. That looks great. Okay. So what would be next in our rainbow? Maybe um, a darker green or a blue. We'll just, we're going to skip straight to blue. I'm going to, instead of doing dark blue to begin with, because I think this to the green would be a kind of a shock 
So I'm going to go with sort of a teal color. Peacock Feathers is has been my number one favorite color for many, many years until last year when Salvage Patina came out. So this is my absolute favorite color now, but um, Peacock Feathers is still a, a, a big favorite of mine. And I think it's going to be the great next color for my rainbow here. Okay. So I've run out of room here on my desk. So what I'm going to do is turn this whole thing around. So just I have a little more coverage here and I'm still going to hang on to everything with my hand using the paper. Okay. And then off of the, I'm going to start off of the paper and then work my way on. Circle, circle, circles, and then work into the green. Okay. This one is not as juicy as my other ones. We can see it's kind of, let me bring it up and show it to you. You can kind of see it's kind of spotty. Hopefully you can, there you go. You can kind of see that. So um, I don't think my ink pads are getting dry. I just think this was not uh, saturated enough. So I'm going to get a lot more ink on here. There we go. That feels a lot better. Oh yeah. Now I've got some wetness to work with. The other thing to think about is when you're very first doing this, um, the when you first put ink, no matter how juicy your pad is or how juicy your foam is, when you go to paper, your paper's dry. And so it's gonna wanna like work against you. You're gonna feel that it's like, it's a little harder to do, but the after you get your first layer on and then you can continue to work with it, the wetness, if you will, you're putting wet on wet, it just glides a lot better. If you ever have, if you apply your foundation on your face with a wet beauty dauber, you kinda know what I mean, that if you start with a dry one, it doesn't feel the same as if you have a, like a damp one. Okay, so I'm gonna blend this into my green using a little bit of a lighter hand. Now I feel like my green got a little bit lost there so what I'm going to do is go back to my green and I'm going to go right over where it was just to reinforce it. Help reinforce the blend. There we go. See I got that harsh line out of there. All right. And then I got a little bit of blue on there so I just you can do that on the on the scrap paper too just go like this until you get in the blue there we go so now only green is coming off so now I'm good again okay and then from this color I'm gonna go to purple we'll do that wilted violet again I'm gonna come back back down here get this in a direction I can use. <laughs> there we go. Put the paper over what I've already inked and I'm going to start in a circular motion and work my way on. Okay. And now I'll fill it in. And I'm going over the teal color a little bit get the, those colors to blend and then this direction I'm just going to use a little bit of a lighter hand okay and finally we will end with the dark darker blue this is prize ribbon and I remember this one is quite juicy and we'll finish this guy off so I'm going to start on this end and then work my way up into the purple Blend, blend, blend. Okay, let's look at what we have. Woo! Gorgeous! Look at that and see how all my colors blended to each other. So I have like, I don't have any harsh lines, I don't think. Mm, right here, I do have a little bit. I'm gonna go back to that peacock color. Try to just fade that out a little bit. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So using these guys is so easy to keep them organized. You can't, they're great for doing little teeny stripes of color or additions of color. Now I went in stripes twice now, but you can certainly go in a, in a, 
in a variety of different um, directions. Here is an example of the dark purple, the or the dark blue, the dark purple, and this was the that citron color, that guy, with a little bit of, of black or hickory around the outside edges, and then a die cut laid over the top. And these little speckles in here, you can achieve that after you've laid down some ink using a dye ba or a water-based ink like this, you could spritz it with a little water to achieve that sort of speckled look in the background. So that's sort of one way, you go, or you can go in more of a circular motion. Here, this is one that we did back at Halloween time. I took a white circle punch, or a circle punch, some white paper, and put it on the center of my card like a mask, and then inked around it in different colors, sort of like in a halo, working my way from light to dark colors. So I have this glowing moon shape now. Remove the paper, I added a little bit of yellow and some painted on a little bit of texture for the moon, and then you have um, a totally different look with some of the same colors. Okay, well, let's clean up the mat a little bit here. See this beautiful puddle of color? One of my absolute favorite things to do is to drag paper through it. I like to die cut paper and then drag it through the little colors to make um, my plain watercolor paper into color. That's what I did with this card. So all of these little cactus die cuts, every bit of it, including the pots, was all white watercolor paper. And I smushed ink like this, spritzed it with water, and dragged all those little pieces through, and then built this. There is a video on this cactus card if you want to see that. Okay. Just another fun technique that you kind of falls into ink blending, but it's that would be used with using with water. All right. Make sure this is good and clean and dry. All right. So we've done the stripes with the big flat and domed and we've done the little stripes with the little dense foam pieces and next i want to do a more realistic <laughs> seamless blend um, what i'm thinking is we'll do the foam pods and do something that is like the same kind of color family so perhaps greens or blues Let's see what I have here. Something maybe like this. Okay. So I'm going to take this foam dauber. I'm going to scoot in a little bit for you. There we go. And I'm going to really saturate this up. Okay. And I'm going to get another piece. I'm going to take that piece of scrap paper. Just go the other way with it. And sometimes it can be, um, when you first start, if I, I, if I want to do this in thirds, it can be, you can get carried away with where the thirds are. So if you're using a glass mat with it ha or any kind of mat that has the, the grid on there, you can kind of use these as your visual aid of how far to go. Or you could put it onto a piece of scrap paper and then take a pencil and just sort of outline your like just visually like that's where my thirds are and then you could and then with another piece of paper you could just go that far i that's up to you those are just two options two options for you okay so we're gonna do i think this was salvage patina i'm gonna start check it out first and then work in a circular motion and work my way on See that? So circles out here and work your way on. This is why I like to use the glass mat because to me, it just, the, the, the tool, whatever I'm using, just glides over this really super smooth surface. And, and I can really tell, I can feel when it hits the edge of the paper. And that's just something that I, I appreciate that I like. Uh, if you don't like that feeling, you might have a better outcome if you use paper underneath. Okay. So I'm going to apply it pretty a couple of times. I'm doing it heavier handed on the on this outside edge here and much lighter handed as we get to about a third of the paper. You can see why this is my favorite color, right? So pretty. Okay. Salvage patina. Now let's do cracked 
pistachio, which is a little bit more of a, a green color. So for this one, much like when we were adding stripes here, what I'm going to do is sort of do this down the middle, leaving a white space. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of do a little stripe for myself and then I'm going to work it in circles. So the center portion, what I've just laid down is I use like a medium heavy pressure and now with a light pressure, I'm going to bring this direction towards that salvage patina blue color. Lightly, lightly blending those two colors together. And then I'm going to pick up a little more and do much more intensely here in the middle. Very nice. I'm going to go back to the light blue and without re-inking it, I'm just going to blend that down into the green too. That is gorgeous. Look at that seamless change from blue to green. I mean, you can't even, you can't even tell where one ends and the other begins, which is awesome. So now let's go into something that would be a little bit more difficult. We're going to go into a really dark green. We're going to end with a dark green down here. So I'm going to use Lucky Clover. And we want a green. So I don't have a light, I don't have a dark green dedicated foam dauber yet. So what I'm going to do is take off all the extra ink off of this uh, that I just used with this, with the pistachio. Just going to kind of rub some of that off of there. Okay. And then I'm going to pick up the dark green. I'm going to see what that looks like. It's really saturated. It's really, really wet. So I'm going to kind of pat some of that off turn this guy around and I'm going to start the darkest green out here on the edge. Remember on this one, on this edge, we did, we did heavy and then we went light. That's what we're doing on this edge, heavy and then go light. So we're going to start really heavy right here. Okay. And then I'm going to just loosen up my pressure more and more as I get to the lighter green. Heavy over here light over here okay so here we can see a pretty I think I can tell yeah you can see it in the camera pretty significant difference there between from one to the next and we want to blend those out it's not all is not lost I do not have my light one anymore right so what I'm gonna do is take off the extra ink off of this guy just I'm just squishing it off onto this scrap of paper here that was a very juicy ink pad get off as much of that as I can there we go okay now I feel good about inking up this lighter color and I can go over that area with a light hand let it fade out perfect that would took like less than two seconds to fix if you will that harsher line see a harsh line right here that's just it was really wet I'm gonna just I, ever so lightly going over the top I mean like feather kissed it there we go beautiful let me zoom out again if I can that's in <laughs> there we go so isn't that pretty this isn't this, this would be really fun for like shamrock or um, St. Patrick's Day. I think it also would make great sort of grassy hills area and then a, a sky area if you want to put together like a little um, scene. You know, maybe some animal stamps or something would be cute with that. Okay. I'm sure some of you would like to see how to do the, the water speckles, so we'll do that one on here. Okay, so you take your inked piece, it can be dry or not because the Distress Oxide is always reactive with water unless you were to put some sort of sealer over the top. So I just have a regular water bottle, just regular tap water in here. If you squeeze with any, uh, let's see, I don't know if I would work on black paper. I want to show you something that would show up. Okay, I'm going to give a really, really slow squeeze. Okay, and then this one I'm going to give over in this area, I'm going to give a really fast 
So can we see the, oh, yeah, it works on black. So I wanted you just to be able to see the different uh, pattern of how the water comes out. So really fast, you get a lot more um, delicate little droplets and slow you get, so if like almost timid like, you get big droplets. So um, that's true of pretty much every sprayer that's not unique to this sprayer. Um, so that's something to keep in mind if you have a particular look that you're going for. But let's, I'm gonna do sort of a medium. Let it sit for about five to 10 seconds and essentially the water is bleaching. Whoops, I'm gonna scoot in so you can see. Is bleaching away some of the color. You can especially see it right here. Then you take a clean paper towel and lay it over the top and blot. Don't rub, just blot and lift. And you have this amazing speckled look now. Isn't that fun? It's particularly great with oxide inks because oxide is reactive with water and it gives you a totally different look when doing so. So I think that that is a lot of fun. Okay. Then I thought we should do the blending brushes. Okay, so we've done the little foam pods, we've done the flats and the domes. Let's do blending brushes. This is leveling up. If you're to wanna to talk about an upgrade, this is your upgrade, girls. And, and ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this is um, really, uh, well, let's just say this. The name says it all, life-changing blending brushes. You can get them in sets of two, four, six, or 10. This is the entire set right here. So you see you can get different sizes, obviously, and different shapes. We've got a couple of elongated styles like these. You have the little teeny round. These are great for getting into small spaces or if you want to do a multicolored stencil, that kind of thing. Um, this is a really good one. But honestly, I pretty much just use these. So um, if I were to buy, oh, here's the other one. If I were to buy these, I would pretty much just buy these ones or at least these two, um, especially if this is what you want to do is ink blending because I, I don't use these ones nearly as much. But it is nice to have the entire set at your disposal. Okay, so these are densely packed. I mean dense. Look at how, look at these bristles. These are silicone bristles, so you can wash You can wash these if you want to. Um, I've had these for a couple of years. I've only washed them once. <laughs> um, I just kind of keep it to the same color family, and that's really a loose term when I say that. What I do is I have a, a roll of paper towels, and I will just take and go like this and tell the colors basically off, or to find out what color is on there. So this is kind of a purple color, so I'll just go ahead and stick with that one. And this one is... It's barely there. It's kind of a gray color, but so I'll stick with that color family. And this one is still clean. So I'll do that with this really light color. I thought I would do these colors because this is a this is a more complicated blend when you have colors that are so different from each other. So I thought I would show this in today's video. This will be the last ink blend that we do today, I think. Now the life-changing blending brushes, in addition to being so densely packed and easy to wash. Um, these are going to give you a much softer blend and very, very professional results without a lot of work, without a lot of technique involved. Um, I will tell, give you a couple tips though. If you hold the ink, the brush down on this end when applying the ink, you're going to have a much softer, delicate, barely there kind of a look. And the more you choke up on the handle, the more intense the color will be. And if you want a lot of payoff, I just hold it up here. And, and really push it and give it a lot more pressure. So pressure and also where you hold it on the handle will indicate or will determine how how deeply saturated your ink, your finished result is, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's, I got another piece of paper here. And we're gonna go light to dark. So I'll do this antique linen color. And a piece of scrap paper will be handy. Okay. So we'll do the same kind of blend in this direction that we did the green. Should I zoom in again? I don't know if that's helpful. How about a little bit? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to pick up a lot of color here. And I'm still going to practice out here and see what it feels like. 
You can also practice on your on your scrap paper to see you know how how wet you have it. And I'm going to hold it about midway. And same idea as the foam brushes. I'm going to start on the, my mat or my scrap paper in a circular motion and work my way onto my paper. And I'm going to do approximately a third. This is one of the softest colors. This is antique linen. So I think it's one of the original eight colors, actually. Distress, distress inks have been around for a long time, and then oxides have been around for, I don't know what, five years maybe? So yes, you can do this with the distress inks. See the lid difference here? Actually, here we go. So there's distress ink and there's distress oxide. See, it's the same exact color name, but very different results. So this is only dye, this is a fusion. You can do this, do these techniques with, with any kind of ink. I just like using the distress oxides the best because they are the most uh, forgiving, the easiest to use, the easiest to blend. And also you can do so many other amazing techniques with them. Okay, so this is sort of the same idea as before. I'm gonna I'm putting a lot more ink down here on one edge and letting the ink sort of run out as I work my way up to about a third of the way up. It is a pretty, um, it is much more challenging to jump the color wheel or the rainbow to go from a color like this to a color like this. <laughs> so it does take a little bit of practice and time. And if you don't like the results, don't fret. You can always um, try putting more color, more saturated color, especially darker color over the top or die cut something out of it. It's never a waste. It's, it's still pretty paper and you can make something different with it. All right, I'm going way back here on the handle just to kind of feather this color out. I probably will go back and add more, but that's where I'm going to end that color for now. Okay. So now we're going to jump to the seedless preserves. I forget which one of these was. This one okay so for this I'm gonna start I'm gonna ink this up and I'm gonna kind of go right in the middle remember how I did that with the pistachio in the middle of this one same idea let's see how juicy this one is pretty juicy I don't want it to be overly saturated but I do want to make sure that I have the color all over the bristles so I'm really gonna work it in here check it on my mat Okay, I'm gonna choke, way, I'm gonna come way down here to start. Am I in frame? Yeah. And I'm going to very lightly sort of make my, make my mark. And now circular motion, sort of right down the middle there. It's easier, especially when you're doing two extremely different colors, to go really, real light, and then we can just keep adding color as we want to. So what can you do with these? some of these backgrounds? They certainly, um, you can die cut them out if you wanted to. Um, I think they look great to put bold stamps on top of. So if you have silhouette stamps or like a, a bolder, larger image, um, I think that could be... Those are really pretty, definitely fun to put like silhouettes of die cuts on top of. So for example, I have, this is a really fun Tim Holtz die cut. And let's just look, just for fun, let's just see what does it look like over top of the rainbow. Wow. Let's look at it the other side. Okay, that's kind of fun, right? Let's look at it over the green and the blue. So pretty, look at that. And you put it on this end, that lighter blue is sort of glowing up from the bottom. Isn't that amazing? I don't know how it would look on the stripes, but let's look. Oh, that's something, that's doable too. You could take something like, I also have, this This is a, from one set. You can get either the twiggy or the leafy one. That's kind of cool. 
I like that too. I think that would probably look best on the green though. Yes, and put a few flowers on there or berries. That looks really pretty. Or maybe you have full panels you want to put over the top. That's so cool. It just completely transforms the whole look, doesn't it? This same this same dye on here is like soft and like a nice soft background and I can have like a more intense embellishment on top. But on this one, it's like super playful and fun and bright and happy. It's a really fun birthday card or something. Color makes a huge difference, doesn't it? Okay, back to our blend. So I've, I've kind of laid down a light application of the purple. This is Seedless Preserves. I kind of want to start to get these two blended together. So I'm going to go way out here on this handle and I'm going to come in where these two meet and very, very lightly start to add ink. Like I said, it's always hardest in the beginning because you're starting with a dry paper. But once you get some ink on there, it doesn't have to be a lot, it starts, they just start blending together really nicely. Now I'm working my way that direction with this light, light, light application of this color. Now this, this combination I'm doing, you can do this with any combination of colors you like. Um, and you can just continue to build the colors and the layers. I'm going to move up to sort of the hand, the neck of this and get a little more intense with my coloring now. I'm not really re-inking. I'm just kind of picking the color up off the mat here. Okay, now I'm going to hold it right here. This is where you can get the most pressure. There we go. I'm going to go back to the, the antique linen color and go over where those two colors are meeting too. And this time I'm using pretty heavy pressure. Beautiful. Very nice. I think I want a much darker purple up here because we're going to, our next color is going to be this black, which is sort of a smoky black. So I'm going to really put a lot of purple right in here right at the top. And then I'm going to just not re-ink it. I'm just going to kind of fade that out by pressing, pressing a little bit softer. There we go. Okay. Now let's add the black. This is black soot. Double check my brush. This is good. All right. I'm going to start out here on the edge and I'm going to use really heavy pressure in a circular motion because I'm on the edge. I'm not between colors, so I can go hard. I go hard first. And now I'm going to really lighten up. I'm not going to ink and I'm going to push towards the purple into a lighter pressure and I'm going to work into the purple, sort of a light pressure. Okay, right here between is a little bit um, um, thin, I guess is a good word. So I'm going to kind of get into like a medium pressure right there. Okay, and let's blend those two together really well. I'm going to go back to the purple brush without re-inking and just where those two colors meet. Just blend it out. That is really cool. Look at that. That is a fun color combo. I am dying to see what these flowers look like on there. Are you? Let's check it out. Let's try it this way first. Isn't that gorgeous? It just looks like they're glowing. Let's try the other direction. Woo! That way is really pretty too. I don't know which way I like better. This one's pretty good. This is more like, you know, dusk, I guess. And this is a little bit more like sunset or sunrise, I guess. So pretty. Oh my gosh. That is an awesome color combo. So that is black soot, 
seedless preserves and antique linen. I hope it illustrates to you that you don't have to stick to the color wheel. You can definitely um, go your own way and try it. It's more about giving space between the colors to lay down that color first and then going back and blending. And there definitely will be back and forth with one tool to the next, you know, one color tool to the next color tool until you can get those colors all nice and blended together. Okay, so we did the color, we did the color blend with more difficult colors. We did the color blend with similar colors. We did the color blend of lots of colors with a small, um, smaller tool. Uh, we did the stenciling, which was fun. And then we looked at what these different ones looked like with, this one is just gorgeous. I'm gonna leave that guy right there. Um, I thought this one was pretty cool. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I just can't help myself. I kind of want to visualize what I might do with these, but you can imagine doing all kinds of things now, I think, and all you just, all of it, you're just starting with white paper, make sure it's smooth, but with this kind of paper and these kind of inks and the tool, the tool of your choice, you really can, I think they all look amazing. Um, if I was, if you... Having used them all, I definitely, this is, I have a soft spot in my heart for these guys because I mean, that blend of difficult colors is just tremendous and there's, you can get from soft to light, but if you're a beginner and you're just starting out, I would highly recommend going this route with the dome. Um, I just, I really, it's just so much easier, the dome versus the flat. Yeah, I would get the dome for sure. Uh, that, or I would get this set here um economically why this one's going to be the, the least expensive option way to go to be able to give you the most color options especially if you think you're going to do stencils or smaller spaces and if you really like intense colors like we have on the rainbow um that's what i would use the small ones for so if you're sort of getting started and you like intense colors and you want like the most bang for your buck and you like to be organized i would get that guy the um this one here or um, if you think you're gonna do more bigger color blends uh, and that kind of thing, I would definitely go this route for sure. This is really, these are really amazing. And I use them a lot, a lot, a lot. And they're the easiest of all of them. I think they're the easiest to blend two colors together because they're not, you can control the depth of, of pressure a lot easier with this bigger tool than you can with a littler tool. This is pretty much gonna be heavy handed is the only way you're gonna really, really gonna be able to get these to blend is to go go intense. <laughs> okay, I th let me see if I missed any questions. Cleveland, Tennessee, hey Judy, welcome. Oh, in Florida, I'm so excited about how many different states and countries we've got checking this out today, that's really fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed this series of 101. You can go back and watch last week's 101 on ink pads. We go over all different kinds of ink pads, what to use them for and why and how. And uh, the week before that was 3D embossing folders. We did a lot of really cool things with those. And then the week before that was stencils. And a lot of these same tools, but apply via stencils in different ways. And one or two other stencils as well. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, if you're not part of our paper crafts club, but you enjoy or paper crafts group, but you enjoy this kind of content, I encourage you to join our free um, paper crafts group. You can get to that via where you are now. Um, just look for groups and then choose paper crafts group. We approve you right away. It's just like this, but it's specifically paper crafts and we do offer a free club once a month. And that's coming up here, I think next week. It's the first Thursday of every, of every month at one o'clock. And we do um, a, a featured demo, we do prizes, we do um, uh, we offer you a way to share your artwork. Um, and it's just a really fun place if you're into paper crafting specifically, you're gonna see a lot more content like this one. All right, thank you guys so much. I'm gonna go back and check your, mess your comments. If you had any questions, I'll try to answer those for you right now. All right, thank you, bye-bye.